Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today we are going to talk about how to interpret Ramachandran plots and here's a problem. Examine the two proteins labeled A and B below. So protein A and protein B. Which of the two Ramachandran plots labeled C and D is more likely to be derived from which protein and why? Take a look at this picture and here you can see amino acid. These atoms belong to the amino acid in the center. This carboxylic group belong to the first amino acid that is not shown here. And amino group here belong to the third amino acid that is also not shown here. But here we see in this yellow color those atoms that doesn't rotate and makes one plane. And some of you may wonder why, for example, we don't have a rotation here around this single covalent bond between carbon and nitrogen. And here we have a peptide bond, which is partially double bond. Double bond here and partially double bond here. We have a peptide bond and here we also have a peptide bond between carbon and nitrogen and they do not rotate along with their group. So with along with this hydrogen and this oxygen because they have double covalent bonding here and this bond is 40% of this double covalent bond. So there is no rotation here. So we have two planes here of atoms that doesn't rotate in relation to each other and makes one plane here, another plane here and the only rotation we have between central alpha carbon of amino acid and its carboxylic group and amino group. And we call this uh, bond phi bond and psi bond. So if we know the angle of each plane, we can describe the whole amino acid to which secondary structure it belongs. And secondary structure can be whether beta sheets or alpha helixes. And we need to know it in computational biology, in bioinformatics, in molecular biology, in order to describe and also predict how polypeptide chain would fold. Let me use such example, which probably would be easier for you to understand. Imagine that we want to describe a posture of the person. And we can say that the person stand with his legs stretch and angle is 180 degrees for each leg. So we can say that person is just standing straight. But what if we would know that person has 90 degrees angle in his legs? In this case, we can say that person is sitting. So this is the way how we can describe the person, his posture and Ramachandran plots is also a way how to describe the shape of the proteins in which they fold and computers need numbers. In order to compute a shape of the protein in which it's going to fold, computer needs these numbers, actually the angles of the plane rotation in order to understand the shape of the molecule. And such planes can rotate 360 degrees or 180 degrees plus with positive sign and minus 180 degrees. And this is true for both of these planes, for both of these covalent bonds. On one side we have here 5 degrees and psi degrees on the other side, 0 and 0 comes here in the middle. So dividing the square into four quadrants. If you think that these planes along with all these atoms can rotate freely, then we should see the dots all over here in all quadrants. But as you see, we see them located only in certain areas. Why this happened? Because this model of the molecule is not very good representation of the intermolecular forces, inter 
atomic forces, for example, this oxygen here would look something like this. This carbon would look like this, nitrogen would look like this, hydrogen. So when we start making these spatial arrangements, we would see that these atoms cannot just take any place they want. They actually, because of this interference, can change uh, its form to certain only allowed degrees. And they rather would jump from one position into another without all the intermediate positions. And this explains why phi and psi angles can be only concentrated around certain numbers or degrees of the angles because we have only two variants of the secondary structures which are beta pleated sheets and alpha helixes. Now take a look at this picture which shows certain degrees of angles of the psi and phi and you will find that certain areas here represent uh, those numbers which allowed for, for example, right-handed alpha helix, left-handed alpha helix, and for beta sheets and parallel beta sheets here. And we also can see here collagen triple helix here and right-twisted beta sheets here. So basically there are three areas here, right-handed alpha helix, which is like over 90% of all helixes and beta pleated sheets, which are concentrated here and left-handed alpha helixes with all numbers, all possible angles we can find in this area. Now take a look at this protein and we see that this protein mostly consists of beta sheets and beta sheets are concentrated here, all these possible variants of the angles would be here. And now let's take a look at this picture, what we see here, that most of the numbers are in this area. That means that this Ramachadran plot represent this protein, A and C. And now let's take a look at this protein. It mostly consists of alpha helixes and we see here that this Ramachandran plot also shows protein where all this uh, description of angles derived and represent alpha helixes, protein which mostly consists of alpha helixes. So we can say that Ramachandran plot D is derived from the picture B. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.